Inside the jumbos, there is none of the constriction, none of the narrowness and closed-in feeling that you get about smaller aircraft, though the nine abreast seating takes some getting used to. It takes 16 hostesses to look after the passengers. In the old DC-3s, you had only two. But it still takes an air crew of only three to get this giant into the air and on its way. It's so damn big that walking down its corridors is almost like a stroll down Grafton Street. Its sheer physical size and the number it can carry were off-putting factors for some prospective passengers who asked can it really be safe to have all that many people up there in the sky? This phenomenon that you mention of people reacting to size is rather peculiar because if you look at our predecessors in the transport world, say ships, it was pretty obvious that when you built a Queen Mary or a Queen Elizabeth or an Ile de France, compared to the smaller ships, that the bigger ships were safer. They were more stable, there was more space, and, of course, they were a later stage of design. Now, this is what's happened with this aircraft. It is an aeroplane which is some four to five years later in its design. Its general design features, structures, engines, electronic equipment, navigation, they're all, you could call it, one and a half generations. But I use the word one and a half generations. It's not a second generation of jet because there's no great breakthrough into any new technology. There's not as much to be learned with this aeroplane as, say, the supersonic. Right. It's the same speed, same operating heights, better materials, better characteristics. So it's the same, only bigger. And it's rather surprising why people should associate size with safety. Up front at the business end of the plane, captains like Pete Little don't see any great difficulties because of the sheer size of the jumbo. When actually in the air, there's very little difference. The cockpit is almost precisely the same size. The panel is very similar. It's only really when you get near to the ground that one is conscious of the fact that you are in a different aeroplane. After all, we're sitting some 26 feet above the ground when taxiing on, as against about 15 feet in the 707. Is, is it a, a, a difficult aircraft to fly or a pleasant one? It's an extremely pleasant aircraft to fly. I think they put certainly a good 15 years of advanced technology into it since the original 707s. And I remember when I came into this business, they said, Dakotas, we've got all metal aeroplanes instead of de Havilland's. 21 people. That's an awful lot of people to have in the sky at the one time. But when it comes down to what's going to pay for this aeroplane, the passengers are flocking onto them. Uh, Statistics mean very little to the average person, I suppose, but in the first year of this airplane ser service, seven million people flew on it. Now, in the first year of the 707 service, one and a half million flew on it. Seven million, twice the population, nearly three times the population of Ireland, flew on 747s alone. There was, of course, a, a very thorough training program on the ground for the jumbo, not just for loaders and dispatchers and engineers, but for hostesses too. Well, this is our first flight and uh, we've got to get used to all new aircrafts. And I found very little problems just walking up and down the cabin, checking that our panels are all right and the ovens are working and that um, passengers are, have their headsets, the movies are switched on and um, just checking all panels in general and that the girls there's a lot more work, obviously, on this aircraft than there would be on a 707. No, there isn't, in actual fact. We have more girls to each cabin. We have uh, cabins A, B, C, D and E. In cabin uh, C and D, we have six girls for 116 passengers. 
so that in actual fact the passengers still get the same sort of service. But is it not tougher on the hostesses? No, not at all. Our passengers are seated nearer to our galleys. Um, do you have a problem, for instance, in getting the food out on time? No, not at that. We did our meal service in 17 minutes. We got all our meals out in 17 minutes and we collected them in about 12 minutes. And is that good timing? Oh, fantastic. Much better than the 707. But on the other I mean, hand, is, is there not a certain boredom of flying in this great, this vast, wide aeroplane? Well, I'd rather say a sense of security and calmness, but you put your finger on one of our biggest problems in training. We are the only carrier flying these airplanes with all hostesses. We don't have a steward, we don't have any men on them. And we built a reputation on these girls, on their friendliness. And one of the greatest things to sell about transport is its normality. We do have good food, we have movies, we have sound entertainment, but primarily our job is to get you from Dublin to New York regularly, safely, and with the least fuss.